Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to this session, how to day trade any futures or Forex market. I should also add there, how to also trade stocks or crypto. Now in today's session, it's a, uh, I think it's, what is it? 27 minutes taken from uh, one of my live trading room sessions where I'm coaching a group of my traders. So you'll be able to watch me execute a number of trades. I'll be explaining the trade setups, etc. as I go along. Now I do need to pull up the disclaimer that there is a risk in trading. Uh, if you're watching the recording, well actually naturally you're watching the recording because we're not live. <laughs> Please feel free to pause the recording to read the disclaimer. If you haven't already, you can click on the link below and request one of my free training manuals and a very, very quick advertisement. Traders for $197, uh, you can obtain all of my indicators, uh, my complete trading program. It, it's been literally described as a gold mine. There's nothing else like it globally. And I'm serious when I say that. There are dozens of videos. There are over 30 PowerPoints. Now I should say you don't have to watch all of the videos because as you'll hear me talk about, I really recommend you start off with only one or two strategies and you build from there. And I'll talk very quickly about that in a moment. We also have a special going at the moment where included in the $197, you can attend eight of my live two hour coaching sessions. So I have around 200 traders a week that attend my live coaching sessions. And on top of that, I've also got a live trading room, but by attending the live coaching sessions, that's where you'll get to learn step-by-step step how to trade the strategies. And if you can't attend live, they are recorded. All of this for only $197. And if you wish to continue after the first month, it's only $97 a month thereafter. But that's the end of the advertisement. Let's now get into today's session. Now, one of the questions that I'm asked regularly, can you really get wealthy day trading? Well, here's what the reality is traders. It's hard to get rich fast. And unfortunately, there's so much promotional material out there about making a fortune out of stocks, futures, forex, crypto, fast. Well, it's just not true. Yes, you'll hear of the rare case where somebody put it all on the line and took massive risks. But the great news is it's also easy though to get rich slowly. And what do I mean by that? So traders, just before we get to, and by the way, there's about 27 minutes of live trading you'll see you know, in a moment. So a couple of rules. First of all, we never ever risk any more than 2% on a trade ever. There are old traders, there are bold traders, but there are no old bold traders. This is a profession and that's the way we approach it. So very quickly, what I'm about to show you just over a couple of slides is if you started with a 4,000 account, you would have a maximum stop loss of 2% to stay within that. I'm going to be showing you today how to start with a small account with a maximum stop loss of $20. But here's what the reality is. If you started with a $4,000 account and go for $200 a day, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, you only need three eight tick trades a day or three six tick trades a day on oil or ES. Okay, and what it really means is you've got the potential of earning 10,000 a week within 12 weeks. And the great news here is you, uh, you're starting off trading one contract and you multiply. However, you only start trading a second contract when you double your money. You only go to three contracts when you've got another 4,000 in your account. So none of this ridiculous um, compounding, which is just not reality in the real market. Now, what about if you do have five, ten, twenty thousand dollars? Well, I say to most new members, why don't you start off with a small account and build it from there? Because it develops two things, both confidence and competence. So with this example, let's just say you start off with a one thousand dollar account and you go for fifty dollars a day, and you're going to see me I think uh, do about $80 in 90 minutes easily uh, and just during the Globex session. And so we really romp that in. And so what we've gone here is we've gone from uh, $50 a day, basically 250 a week to 10,000 10, a week in only 18 weeks. Now here's a spreadsheet here. So if you start trading the micro $1,000 account, 12 tick Renko, 
And remember, you can trade any type of chart with this, $50 a day. Uh, that's all. You're up to your 10,000 a week in 18 weeks. Now, in the session last night, we just we had four trades, um, four winners uh, in 90 minutes, and that was not taking every trade here. And let me just show you this very quickly. Here's what it means is that, and by the way, you get all of these spreadsheets as a member, but it's important that you've got a target and you have goals because it gives you something to focus on because when the, um, uh, the why is big enough, the how will appear. So just on this example, a thousand earning 50 a day, you're up to your 10 grand a week and that is within 18 weeks. That is once again, you only start trading an additional contract when you double your money and so forth. And here where it says trading 100 contracts, what you'd actually do, once you build your account to 10,000, the micros are 10% of the value of a large contract, you then start trading the big contracts. You start off by trading a micro. But let's just say here that on average, you are prepared to say trade two to three hours a day. And let's just go for $80 a day here. Uh, we're up to our potential of 10,000 a week in only 11 weeks doing what was very simple as you'll see in the live video with my members. So you'll hear me interacting. Now, what's also important I mentioned with other spreadsheets here, got other um, spreadsheets that will show you on various markets uh, following a 2% rule, how much capital you really need. And that can vary subject to the time frame of the day or the time of day because of volatility or how slow or how fast you wish to trade. So these are some of the tools that I arm you with. And then there's just one other, how many trades realistically will I need to execute each day to hit my target? Now here, if we go for say $50 a day, trading the micro NQ with only a 75% win ratio, we need five trades a day on average. Now, last night uh, in that session there, it was fairly typical. Um, there it was 80%, well actually it was four out of four, but you've got these tools that will better arm you uh, in learning how to trade professionally. And that's what this is really about. So, a couple of things before we get to the video, so you understand what you're looking at. You will see on the chart, I have three timeframes. We've got the EC, we call an entry chart, and the anchor chart one, anchor chart two. As a, if you're a brand new trader, you really just want to start off with maybe your entry chart and your anchor chart one, and you can introduce a, another time frame later on. Because in the end, what we're really looking at doing here, if you look at the dark blue line here, I look at it like an ocean. Okay, we've got trends, uh, we've got uh, the waves, and we've got the tides. So the dark blue line represents our higher time frame. We trade in the direction of the higher time frame. This is how you master the art of day trading. The other thing is you'll sometimes hear me talk about a lot of different strategies and, and you know you'll hear me talk about the T5 and uh, T19 and things like that. Well you only initially start a maximum of two strategies both trend following and they're like brother and sister. They're very very closely related. Um, and so once you've got those under your under your belt, you can then, if you choose, add another, then another. So very, very important. It's a concept that's actually, scientifically, it's called decision fatigue. You don't want to suffer fatigue when you're trading. That's one of the fatal mistakes when you first start learning how to master the art of day trading, uh, learning too many strategies. And if you said just one, the 2B is it, um, hands down. It's a good 80, 85% plus winning trade, very reliable, rules-based, uh, very mechanical in its approach. And most importantly, it's a pattern that we see very easy to learn. And last of all, some of the language I use when it comes to, not colorful language, but language on how to trade may be foreign to you. You'll have what I call aha moments in learning how to trade. So you'll hear me talk about pivots or open high, low on close, things like that. And don't make the mistake that most traders make. They get all excited when they see a video or get some promotional material and think I'm gonna be up and live trading in 14 days making a fortune. Traders, the way to approach this is to treat it as a 90 to 180 day internship. Yes, you can do it quicker, but 
give yourself time, it relieves the pressure, but this is the reality, okay? If you're an experienced trader and struggling, we can probably get you turned around in 30 to 60 days, but you've got to approach this realistically. So that's the end of my bit. So what we'll do now, we'll cross straight over to the live trading room. So traders, enjoy the live session and hopefully I see you in one of my trading rooms as a member. A 34B there. So we just had a 34B and I had a 2B uh, just prior to that. So we can see we've got a pivot up ahead. So while we're targeting a pivot, so traders will be underway in nine minutes. So we can see I haven't gone to break even yet. So this has been uh, fluffing around in this area for ages. So we'll see whether we do get some follow through. I hope I do. So we'll just uh, keep hanging on. I'll keep recording, even though we're not um, starting for another nine minutes, uh, just so we can see what happens with this 34B. And you can see actually we've formed a fair amount of divergence here but we do have this pivot up above. So usually I'd expect to go up there and maybe get a retracement, a bounce and a, a pullback, but we'll see. This uh, trade's been dragging on for, gee, it seems like forever. Uh, and if I look at it, it's only 10 minutes. <laughs> we like momentum traders. So once again, our target here is, uh, would be $220, $220 on a big contract, 22 on the micro. Break even is five steps, which is 150 on the big contract or 15 on the micro. G'day France, g'day Tom. Simon, Frank, Scott. Underway shortly. So the pivot is our target. So as you always get closer to the pivot as we are now, it becomes what we call a pivot magnet trade. The same thing happens when we're targeting the main EMAs on our anchor charts. Our black horizontal lines here are previous support resistance levels. So you can see we're sort of stuck in that range for ages. So my target is uh, one or two ticks or about a tick really above the pivot. So uh, hopefully we go up there and still tick through by a tick or so. Trust it, you're well, Tom. Come on, giddy up. Now what we've got to be aware of, now mind you, it'll be uh, in six minutes time, it'll be 8 a.m. in Frankfurt. We usually still see a reaction though. But because we're so close to the pivot, I'd still expect a pivot bounce. We shall see. As we know, the market will do what the market will do. So friends, I need you to go and buy probably 100 micros or 10 big contracts. Just If you just do a market order, that'll spike it to the long side. <laughs> if I had John Hull here, he'd do that for me. Okay. 
Uh, friends, um, it can be with the different um, uh, time frames. Oh, there we go. So there was that pop. So, okay, so we're already up uh, 440 or 44 a contract. So very good. Our target is 50 net. So that's good on two trades. Uh, so friends, that can be different times on your um, uh, computer clock. So it's interesting. We tend to have two different pivot levels. Uh, so I find John Hull and a few of the others, they have a different, always a different level to mine, but Ali and a number of other traders always have the same as, sorry, they, theirs are always different. Mine or <laughs> a group of other traders match mine. So it's quite bizarre. But you'll still be amazed how often uh, we go and obey those pivots. So what we can see down here, this is the prior day's close. So as we know, the open, high, low and close can have a lot to do with the pivots. Now back here traders, look at this terrible price action there. Uh, that was over a good 40, 50 minutes. So that is where of course, that's what we call an account killer. Hello April. Good to have you here. So I'm already recording. Uh, g'day Raymond. We're just talking uh, Raymond about um, the different pivot levels because Raymond, uh, what's yours, by the way, Franz, what is yours of the R1? Could you just type that into the box, please? Now with this here traders, let's remember it's uh, nearly 8 a.m. Frankfurt time. So we tend to get quite a reaction at 8 a.m. Okay, so we're looking at here, we do have some slight divergence. Let's look at the anchor chart too. Uh, look a little bit there. So we do have, and so you can see here, I'm bouncing uh, off my pivot. We'll see what Raymond's is in a moment. Okay, great. I'll give that to, uh, we'll see what Raymond comes up with in a moment. Now traders, this was almost what we call a T3. See the distance from the close of a third candle to the 34 EMA? If we had at least five steps, we would have had a T3, which is a mean reversion, but it was only about four steps. So it didn't quite qualify. So I'll just compare friends with uh, Raymond when he puts his up shortly. So traders, what we can see here, um, uh, we've got a 34B just there. I'm hesitant in taking that 34B um, because I'm right at my pivot. And also I'm sort of borderline having a 2D here. So I'm gonna sit this one out. But if we go back, we had um, just this one back here. This was our first genuine 2B after this period of consolidation. So you can see this is actually we made a new higher high. It was really a perfect 2B after this period of consolidation. Thank you very much. And that was our very first 34B uh, after we had that pullback. Okay, so one minute less than that to the hour. So we do have another 34B there, but I'll be very cautious with that one after that rally in the market. And we're right on the pivot now, could take off like a rocket, but the thing is we're about to, uh, it's about to turn 8 a.m. in Frankfurt. So usually there is a reaction at that time. Now it could rally to the long side also, uh, but we shall see, it's just best if you're not sure or uncertain just to sit on the sidelines as I'd prefer to do. And it looks like that 34B is taking off to the long side. G'day John M, good to have you here. Okay, so we've had two nice uh, trades to start with just before they we kicked off. 
the first to be after a great period of consolidation. And as we talk about traders, the killing field, these areas, time and time again, we sort of say these are the areas that we've just got to resist the temptation and stay out of these zones. Let's just watch the open here for a moment. So we can see here, we've got a lot of uncertainty going backwards and forwards. Now it's not actually the open of Frankfurt, but you tend to find at 8 a.m., you'll usually have a hive of activity at that time. Now, if you were trading a big con the, the big contract here, uh, each one of those steps here is $30. So that's where you can still get in to sculpt the crap out of it, as we say. Now, if you look at this here, so we can see here we're right on the hour, one minute after. Okay, so we've got a slight lower high. In actual fact, if we look at that right there, that is what we call a T10 setup, where we've got a lower high, our MACD is dropping away, sorry, our long-term stochastic is dropping away. Now your best T10s will be after major divergence. G'day, uh, Kevin, good to have you here. Everyone else? Let's just get the disclaimer over and done with as we usually do. Where is it here? Let's get it up here, traders. We all know there is a risk in trading. Don't trade with the rent money unless you're consistently profitable as a trader. Uh, what have we got in front of us today? So Thursday, we've got a lot on after the uh, New York session gets underway. 8.30, housing starts and permits. For jobless claims, that's not the big one. It's the, the first of a month. But look, we might get a bit of a, uh, reaction there, but the Philly Fed manufacturing, that is the big one and the industrial production. So we've got plenty of red flags once the market gets fired up. So if we go and have a look at Thursday, there's nothing there really on Forex Factory that jumps out for us, except at 8 a.m. we do have some big GBP. Now that may very well affect uh, the ES, uh, of course, any currency futures in the Forex markets, it will definitely uh, affect the market then at that stage. So we can see here with our 34B, fairly typical, right at the pivot, we had a reversal fairly quickly at that stage. And as you know, I recommend you consider sort of dropping in when you get these lower highs, just as a reminder to track these, just to put yourself in a little trend line at that stage. Okay, so just here, we've got this, uh, we're pulling back. I want you to notice though, uh, we do have a fairly strong uptrend on our EMAs. If you look at your three time frames, they're trending up well. But particularly after we come out of a, a period of consolidation, look at that there, quite a period there, uh, you tend to get quite a move after that. So that is where you really want to reframe the meaning of a consolidation period. I want you to get excited about it because it usually means a great breakout. So Raymond, I'm not sure if you're there now, mate. Uh, if you are, could you just tell me or type in what your um, R1M level is, if you wouldn't mind? Just like to compare to Franz here and see what his... Franz, whereabouts are you based? Could you just type that in? Just, um, just looking at time zones. If you just type in where you're based, that'd be great. And uh, April, how's the community recovering down there? I know it's pretty devastated from what I see on the news. Now, this could turn into a 2B here. Look at this here. Uh, so look at this, it's quite a deep pullback. Um, Look, I've entered it, it's a higher risk trade. I have entered this. Now I want you to notice, so I just used the market order on this one. Now I, we were talking about this in the class this morning about stops. Now see how I'm not quite below. So I'll just move my stop to two ticks below. Now, as I mentioned, my break even is five steps. So I've gone to um, now at break even. And this is where if you're trading multiple contracts, uh, I recommend you take half off at five steps, which you have well and truly uh, achieved. You've gone the break even, so we've locked it in here. And of course, my second target is seven steps. Okay, so uh, uh, target fill. So traders, 
Oh, South Africa. Thanks, um, uh, Franz. So, traders, what we've just hit there. So, we're up, um, that would be $660 on those three trades. Okay, just on those three. Now, let's examine those. So, this is a plain vanilla everyday 2B. That was a 34B. And this one was another 2B. Now, here's what we watch. We look over at our anchor charts over here. See how basically we've now come up and at this stage, almost a double top. And this is where we start looking at divergence. So let's expand our, oops, and we're really popped here. Okay, and so when we get this sort of pop, uh, just watch your MACD, because quite often then you'll get your MACD will start to roll over. Now note at this stage, we've got a higher high on price and a lower high on our MACD. So what that can sometimes, and should I say usually lead to, is a potential divergence trade. Now, if we look at the legs up, I would sort of classify that maybe as one leg, and this is sort of second leg, you could maybe consider that as a leg, meaning after you've had two or three legs up, you are more likely to then have a reversal, okay, a reversal of sorts. Now, where that is not true is if you've got very, very strong uptrend. Um, Kempsey wasn't de um, devastated, it was more water actually. Now, uh, the April, there's a bridge there in Kempsey and there's some units on the side of a bridge there. My grandson owns one of those investment units there. And the water was miles from going up to his unit. So I forget what it's called. <laughs> They're up here at the moment. I'm just waiting for him to get home. Um, I want to ask you because my son lives just on the edge of Kempsey in a suburb there. Just can't remember what it is. Um, so we can see this here. We don't have a divergence trade, but I must tell you where it is. So here we've got the uh, higher high on price. Now that there is virtually a 13B. Now, what have we got in front of us? Remember, we're always considering, and as I think I mentioned, April, my grandson is the youngest councillor ever to be appointed at the Kempsey Council. So we can see just above there with um, that uh, cyan line there, that is the prior day's high just there. So just heading up, just uh, so now remember these become also very much price magnets. So we've got our pivots and our open, high, low and close. Uh, uh, Raymond, are you present? I know uh, you haven't answered me, so I'm not sure you mustn't be in the room. Normally you jump straight on. So mate, if you are, could you just type in a yes if you're there? Oh, you're back now. Mate, would you mind just letting us know what your R1M is, if you wouldn't mind. I'll just be one moment. Thank you. Just a sec. Sorry about that. Oh, yes. I can imagine my pride in my kids. Yeah. Yeah, so Josh Freeman and my son ran, ran for it as well. Uh, okay, so, uh, all right, so Franz, he's in South Africa. His mid, uh, R1M was 1398775. So yours is 1398225 and mine's 1399638. So they're all different. Whoops, just get back to this for a moment. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so your pivots are a mess. You've actually been meaning to email you. You emailed Roy to get his. As I've, Are you still on TradeStation April? Because his um, pivots I found always to be perfect. 
So if you're using TS, oh, you're, you're on Ninja now, okay. All right, uh, everyone, just while we're on this here, uh, let's just have a quick look at this. So that there was sort of a borderline uh, 2D we had here. We had a high, high in price, and COMAC did basically level. So let's just check the anchor. Now on the anchor chart two, uh, slightly, all right, you can see there you've got some divergence. Where I'm suspicious is we've still got the prior days high up there. So what we may have traders is a retracement and then a trend continuation. Now, if we look at divergence here, it's much more obvious on your entry chart. That is what we call a T19. Usually, when you've got a T19, you'll sort of get a bounce somewhere around this zone, the 34 or thereabouts. However, it is quite a solid move, and this I'd say is our definitely getting up to being our third wave. So we'll see what happens uh, here in a moment. Now, April, uh, I emailed Roy about, I'll send you the email he sent me. I've got a couple of emails there. If you email me, just to remind me on what he had to say about the Ninja Trader pivots and his indicator on Ninja Trader, I've, I've found these ones, not that I want you to tell Roy, but I've found these ones, the standard ones we use to be better. I just couldn't get Roy's working on Ninja Trader yet on TradeStation, they were brilliant. But everyone's got an opinion on the pivots. Okay, so we pull back. Now, when we pull back like this, now see how the tail has almost touched the 21 on the anchor chart. So this could end up being almost a 2BD. Look, it could just be a 2B here. Here we've got a 30 foot, not quite touched, but very, very close. And I'd still be targeting our prior high just there. Now, on this candle close, so we get the anchor chart, one candle close. We actually have an official, I'd call it a 2B. Please do. But yes, I am, April. As I said, we've got a price magnet just above. Now, because you've had three reversal candles here, a little bit of insurance can be, and it doesn't always hold, but it certainly helps if you'd wait for your candle to close here, which would be at um, 0.1575. So what you can do, you can simply just um, drop in a buy stop order at that level. And if the market does take off, you'll get stopped in of a trade. If it keeps reversing, you're, you can just cancel the order. Now, let's also remember um, that, uh, of course, in 45 minutes, we have the official Frankfurt Open. And in an hour and 45, we've got the London Open. So let's just uh, have a look at our support resistance levels once again. So we can see here that we've got this point here, we've now got this one here, and down here, let me just drag that one down to there, and I'll remove that one. So we just wanna keep an eye on these points, and you'll be amazed at, see this uh, swing high, how often, further over here, that can act as a support level. Now, 
Now, just over here, I mentioned the T10. I think I mentioned also that the T10, you really just want to trade when you've got major divergence. It's it's sort of really only a, probably a 65, 70% trade. Um, and so even though in the members area, in the strategy PowerPoint, you'll find an extensive PowerPoint on it, but um, I generally don't trade the T10s. You can see here we've slowed right down. Now certainly when I look at the tick chart, and if we just have a look at the, uh, you know, that's, oh, that's a 377. Let me just quickly change that to a 55 if I may. So I just wanna show you the pattern that you've got on the three, on the 55, sorry. Okay, so that's what we've got there. So we've got almost a bet the farm type look here. See how we've got a low low, we've got a bounce here and we've got some divergence. Now, it also looks like here a descending triangle. We've made some lower highs. And you can see here that the, whoops, and let's get back to our chart here, that once again, for insurance, if you were inch looking at this, I'd still want to wait for the candle to close. No, and it doesn't look like it wants to, it looks like it's going to fall. Now, our arrow there tells us we've got a T20. So you can trade the T20s, and when you get a combination of a T20 and our crossover, the T78, you've got what we call a T5 trade, and that T5 worked out brilliantly. So remember, after a major move, you'll nearly always have your T70 set up, a seven by eight will cross. Then usually soon after, you'll then have your T20. When you've got both of those conditions on your entry chart and your anchor chart one, they will generally make a great shorting opportunity. So look at this 34B, 34B, that's a 2B, 34B, and another 34B. Now in these very strong downtrends, this is where also the divergence traders can be hammered. On this one, I want you to notice there the great divergence now, sorry, the angulation. The angulation is where you've got your EMA. Uh, let me just keep an eye on this one because I'll probably take, once again, I, I will take the T5 if it sets up. I will take the T5 if it sets up. Let's just see how we go here. Great divergence on the tick charts. So you can see there is your divergence, divergence and you've got major divergence here. But um, your T5s, what I like about them is it's a much deeper pullback and you've got two major indicators confirming the reversal, two major things happening. Now, is this going to continue to drop though? That's the question here because this right there is a 21B. There is on the close of a third candle, it's almost a 34B, as you can see. Now to be a 21B, we'd wanna see three lower closes. Okay, so let me just get ready here for a potential. 
So that 21B didn't qualify. Still don't have a T5 waiting for the arrow on our entry chart, a T20 to set up. Getting close, there we are. So I'm in, I'm long. Now I use the same stop and there I'm, I'm in actually late a couple of ticks. Now just remember, this can still turn into a 2B short against me. However, after the number of waves I've had, um, usually I'm pretty confident on this. So we'll see what happens. So my target is uh, 220 or 22 dollars per contract here. Just be aware this could turn into a 2B short here. We're up at our 89 and 34. However, pretty confident with the pattern that we've got here. Just get me up to five steps, then I'll break even. Always happy when we get to the five steps. So you can see we've got a bit of resistance there. I'll stay with it and this is where I'll just leave my stop where it is. It's always nice when you pull your stop way down here, but my risk reward doesn't match. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, we may get some uh, consolidation around the 200. We very well could up here. Hopefully we pull, pull back because we've got divergence here back to at least the 21 here. So look at this here. So and there's so now we're at break even. So this is now a free trade. Now I'd really like this to get up there a few more steps and we'll lock that in. And that'll be a four out of four. There we go. So be up, we would be up on the big contract 880. So that was a T5. Now with our T5, I want you to notice this traders. Yes. So certainly. So let's start with this one. So we had uh, had a number here, but if we go with this one, a T5 is after we've had a major swing and we get a T20 sets up on our entry chart and we have a T78, which is the crossover of our simple moving averages on our anchor chart one. Usually, We'll get the crossover on the anchor chart one first, followed by the T20. Okay, so that's why I was waiting here. So down here, for an example, we had a potential of there's a T78 there. We had the crossover, we had it there, and then we had it there, and finally, I had my T20 set up there and away it went. Now look at this here, it only ticked up a few more ticks. What I'll usually find is when we cross above our 89, usually we'll trend up to the 200. So we'll see what happens here. But T5s, um, are, are, you really wanna be waiting for your waves. Okay, so that's really what we're looking for is waves in the market. And in the meantime, of course, are you welcome, Greg? In the meantime, of course, we went on the 34B, 34B, and that was a 34B. Uh, and let me just do this and do this for you. Uh, so just there and there. So he had entries there and there and i'll see uh, you all next week uh thanks arthur thanks everyone thanks for those that um, gave some input and uh have a great weekend see you next week thanks traders